Okay, here we are at Metal Talk in the busy streets of Camden. Tonight, Cam Chuck. Cam Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> in the first, first headline UK date. I'm here with Thomas, <laughs> Tobias, and Pierre. Guys, how are you? We're very good, thank you. Yeah. And uh, as I just said, it is your first uh, UK date, and why has it taken so long? <laughs> well, first headline date, I should say. <laughs> I mean, we have, we have toured quite a lot in, in um, Germany and uh, Scandinavia. And I don't know. It's just taking some time. Well, <laughs> well, obviously, you've been here before with uh, Clutch 2009. Yeah. And uh, over the years, you've built up a good friendship with Clutch. And uh, how did that friendship, how did you get a bond in the first place? Yeah. <laughs> I think it was uh, based actually. The first time I learned to know uh, those guys was uh, when we toured with. Uh, I was playing in a band called Spiritual Beggars, and we did a European tour together with Clutch, and that's when I learned to know them as as people. Before that, I always liked the music, and apparently they liked ours as well. So that was it was a cool package and a good good run. And then we just stayed in touch over the years and. Uh, I started playing with Opeth and got to tour with Clutch again and these guys, because I wasn't playing with them then, uh, put out their first album and I knew that a couple of the, at least a couple of the guys in Clutch would, would love the band, you know, and so I gave them the CD and, and they liked it a lot and then it just, you know. The, that's great to hear. And um, for those who not too, know too much about the band, tell us about the name Kamchatka. Yeah, I mean, we were just thinking about, from the beginning, the band was called Shrimp Monkey. <laughs> but the label for the first two albums in uh, New York, they, was not, they were not so fond of uh, that name, <laughs> Shrimp, Shrimp Monkey. I don't understand why, but... No, but it's quite good. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to come up with a new name and we were just brainstorming about, okay, let's find a location that could, that we could, like, think of as dynamic in nature that could, could relate to the, the dynamic feel, feeling that we felt for the feel for the music. So from that it came. And we thought up that uh, Kamchatka, uh, that's a cool place. With volcanoes and... Yeah. Uh, Sulfur lakes. Yeah, and cold and hot at the same time. And yeah. yeah. So that's how it came about. Well, I think you might know what the next question is going to be. Have you ever been there? No, no. no. <laughs> unfortunately not. <laughs> So, but I wasn't ready to take us there. We're going there. <laughs> but I want to do a a, a, a live um, show, a live yeah. show, live DVD, just at the base of a volcano that's about <laughs> oh. to erupt. You know. <laughs> Earlier today, you said inside of. I think I think that could be the best video ever. <laughs> yeah, that would be great with with some aluminium costumes or something. It would be great. And uh, you're based in a. I hope I pronounce this right, Furberg in Sweden. Can you yeah. tell us more about that town, the size of it, and what kind of town is it exactly? It's pretty small. Well, it's, compared to UK, it's very small. Uh, it's it's just uh, an Six, hour south, yeah. south of Gothenburg, uh -huh. on the west coast. So, yeah, it's a very nice place. It's small, it's calm. Is it one of those sort of towns where everybody knows everybody? <laughs> it's, uh, it's still it's it's uh, 60,000 oh, well, people yeah. in the community, uh -huh. but it's kind of spread out because it's uh, on on, on, uh, on the former side as well. So yeah. it's, it's, yeah, it's got some cool history as well. Uh, like it's it's basically one of the first Swedish spa resorts, you know, for yeah. lots of rich people travel there in the old days to. Yeah. To recover, to recover. 
their busy life and uh, uh, of course you still got that kind of uh, thing going on as well we look, we, if you would consider that size of the city I guess Borber has a lot more spas than, than <laughs> yeah. any other Swedish town <laughs> with the yeah. same size that's great, that's great to hear let's talk about the new album The Search Goes On it's your fifth album I must admit I'm going to a death day actually it's a great album it really is good and um it's sort of, um, it's around the 42 minute mark. Do you think that's important that albums should be around 40 minute mark? You know, it's like the modern day age, many bands make albums like 70 minutes. Do you feel like 70 minutes is too long? You like, you like it the old school way, where it's, it is 40 minutes. Me? I think, yeah, you go. I, I think the first two albums are very long. They're way over an hour, or at least a little bit over an hour. And nowadays, since uh, LPs or vinyls are back again, mm. we, have, we don't have that in mind when we do a record, but it's nice when you have all the material down to, uh, to be able to say, is it going to be a vinyl release? Then your mind starts to, to work for once. <laughs> I was like, are you big final lovers yourselves? Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, I think, I think personally, well, that, I think it's also about like what generation, like how you grew up listening to music, and and of course, I would say that you know, like a 42 minute, like albums between 40 and 45 minutes would be perfect because that's what I grew up on. Mm. But I also think that more material material than that is, is it takes a lot a lot of time to digest you know and, and it's I mean I have plenty of albums that are past the one hour mark that I consider would be amazing but I think for a band like us I think it suits the band you know like 40 45 minutes and it also gives us the chance to release material more frequently instead of you know doing 50 15 songs every third year you know you can come up with 10 songs and then have put out music constantly it's not it's not all based on uh, you know business because it's fun for us as well to play new material and develop as a band yeah. so it's important as well so. and let's talk about the sound of the band you know because it's like you labeled in this like stoner rock movement but you are very heavily influenced by like the psychedelic blues of the late 60s and early 70s so what bands did you all listen to collectively when you growing up John Mayle and the Blues Breakers with Eric Clapton that uh -huh. was my first yeah. <laughs> I mean uh, and uh, I guess I am the, the blues guy of the, the band, mm -hmm. blues side. Yeah. So I go, my influences and favorites are BB King and Albert King and those older, old, old guys, older gentlemen that, that play the blues. Yeah. And then when, I, when uh, we started Kamchatka, it was like, yeah, uh, how, how do we. Uh, do this because the, the chemistry was there mm -hmm. but how do we um, blend this and we just started to play and that's been the I guess the, the thing for us since day one yeah. we just play just put everything in there from our different uh, influence, influences and see what it, what we get what we get out of that sounds good and on the first album, the debut album, you actually did a Johnny Winter cover, didn't you? Yeah. And um, oh, no, also, bizarrely, two songs by uh, Gerald Cassell from Devo. So why did you choose the two the songs from uh, Gerald Cassell? Why not? <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Devo was a very cool band. Well, it is it's a very cool band. Yeah, yeah. Because they put out albums. Not a lot of heavy rock fans don't know too much about Devo. And also, I would say it's it's very much an uh, American thing as well because they were very popular over there, but maybe not so popular over here. But they, I mean, if you look at it, just you know, the notes or whatever, they got some very cool riffs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we like riffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. So you've written band. Yeah. Uh, going back to the Johnny Winter, do you, do you still put like blues covers into your live set? <laughs> we were talking about that uh, just today, today actually, oh, yeah. uh, about putting back uh, the uh, uh, 
that particular young winter song. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. I love everyone. I love everybody. It's called that song. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. <laughs> to, to back to the set. We wanted to remind ourselves, actually. So. But but I think it's 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 always nice to go to go in one direction and then go back and, and, and search the roots on a live show. That's a good experience for, for us as musicians and as a band. They, they go back to that and go that way. And obviously all blues bands do covers themselves yeah. kind of thing for, and, for and history. The, you need to do an The song as well is a yeah. slide song which we don't have any in the set anymore. Yeah. So. Maybe you could surprise me tonight with the encore. <laughs> Be I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Careful what you wish for. <laughs> and um, let's talk about the artwork because um, yeah, it's got a little hidden talent there. You know, yeah. it's quite unique artwork you've got there. One thing I did notice with all the album covers, you use like two tones of different colours. Like the latest album's got different shades of blue, different shades of black, and then one yeah. before like green and white, and one before that is like, orange kind of thing. Yeah. So, so, so why do you only use like two shades of certain colours as such? Well, originally it was there was no big master plan for anything. It's just like the first album cover <coughs> just more or less winged it came up with some like imagery that that I thought because I wasn't in the band at yeah the he time. wasn't at the time no. I was a friend of the band and just try to come up with something that I thought would fit the music uh, so to speak and my influences on the artwork would be like you know birds of fire with Mahavishnu orchestra or something like that you know and uh, then I guess the next one you just wanted to use a, a different color scale uh, compared to the first one, so it wouldn't look the same. You know? and, then, and then after that, what do you mean? Is he didn't have many colors to work with? No, but, but then after a while, you just like, okay, okay. So when when, when they did recorded the third one, it was like, okay, first one's red, uh, next one's blue. This one is gonna be yellow. And so no, I mean it. I think since it's the fifth album, the new one is sort of you. You want to come up with something that the band had hadn't used before, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, the theme, like the pictures, and and also the colors. And I think we're going to come up with something cool for the next. One. <laughs> well, so it's quite striking. It's quite unique. So does your artwork appear anywhere else? Yes, I've done a couple of uh, albums for. Uh, the other band I mean called Spiritual Beggars. Mm -hmm. I've done artwork for that. The latest album called Earth Blues and uh, at Astra and On Fire. And I've, I've done lots of freelance graphic stuff actually. Yeah, that's good. It's so, good to hear. Yeah. And um, another question directed to you, Pierre. And I just mentioned before we started this interview. Last time I saw you, I think it was the is it the Mellow Boat? Yes. It's in like, uh, 08. Yeah, it's like impressive what the festival goes like. Stockholm to Helsinki, it's yeah. a great weekend, you know, and I highly recommend anybody go on these trips. But on that occasion, not only did you play with OPEF, you also guested with uh, Lee Found, uh, Stone Rock Band. Yeah. And uh, you guested with, uh, with them to play the song Breakthrough, which actually had an Atomic Rooster song, yes. which featured Lee Found singer Peter French. Yeah. And that day you sort of relive in a dream, you sort of you put the, the red band down around your head, you were Prince and Crane for the night. And um, have you ever sort of had an opportunity to do that again? With other bands, where you can like play the part of somebody who's now deceased, kind of thing. But when I the dream. when I grew up and learned how to play keyboards, uh, Vincent Crane and Atomic Cruise there was like a major influence on in playing. So it was, I mean, it was a, a really cool thing that they asked me to play that song with them and keep French singing it. That was super cool. And uh, I played Atomic Rooster covers in the little town where I come from with my mates and so which would be Stefan one of the organizers for the boat yep. and uh, but it, I haven't played any of that uh, if you would call it obscure because a little bit more obscure stuff with so many bands nowadays recently occasionally it would be like you know the old purple cover or whatever with you know, friends and, and, and stuff like that, but not so many. Oh, I do. You, you want to eat purple to fight on stage and say, Don, go to this one side one second, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and so, some question goes to you, Thomas and Tobias. If you could guest with any artist and play a song of one of your heroes, who would it be? That's a tough one. 
you have already in a sense. Join the winter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we should. There's no rush. I think we should cover Iron Maiden though. Yeah. Yeah. And Iron Maiden yeah, cover you, would you be spoke, great. You spoke yeah. earlier. I, I grew up with Iron Maiden. That, yeah. That's my. As a kid, that was my biggest influence. So perhaps Iron Maiden would be nice. I was just about to ask you about what your earlier influences were. No, you were saying Iron Maiden. Yeah, I came from hard rock like Iron Maiden, Ozzy Osbourne, the early records, yeah. and some Judas Priest, and stuff like that. I came from there. And then I discovered Deep Purple, yeah. and then it went on to Hendrix, and then I. Thomas showed me the real blue yeah. stuff. So and obviously, Thomas is in the blues. And Pierre, who's your earliest band you liked? I was fortunate having parents that were really into music. Uh, so they, my first album that I got as a really young kid was Hendrix. And uh, I guess they didn't know what they were doing, really. Because they were, <laughs> I was pretty much fucked from there on. Sorry, language. Uh, but <laughs> so. But I guess, you know, uh, the stuff that they would play when I was a kid, like Neil Young, Carol King, Jimi Hendrix, Mahavishnu, lots of Coltrane and Miles. That's yeah. my early childhood years. And then you grow older and you want to rebel, right? So metal and punk and hardcore, you know. Fantastic. Yeah. And that, ladies and gentlemen, collectively brings you the sound of Kamchatka. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The album, The Search Goes On, it's out now. Yeah. Yep. It's a fantastic album, believe me, it really is good. Guys, I wish you all the best for the future and we'd like to see more of you in the UK. Yes. Yeah. It's been great talking to you all. Thanks yeah. very much. Thank Take you. care. Thank you. Cheers. Cool.